out your spirit. Pour out your spirit. Be viewing the outpouring for your refreshing and infilling. Pour out your spirit. Pour out your spirit. Pour out your spirit on me. Welcome viewers to the outpouring once again. Today in the studio with me is me, myself and I and the Holy Spirit. Today I was wondering, well, what am I going to speak about? And I asked the Lord, what do I, what are, what do I talk about today? And uh, immediately what came into my spirit is the love of God. So today's program is entitled The Love of God. John 3 16 we all know it most of the children can quote it off the bat for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes on him should not perish but have everlasting life so we all know that verse and sometimes I think we we either take the love of God for granted or sometimes we we do not stop to examine the depth of the love that God has for us. If we were to just stop, look around, and look at the beautiful earth that God created for us, when we consider Jesus' mission on the earth, that is a love story in itself and the word of God is full of so so many accounts that depicts the love of God the entire book from Genesis straight through to Revelations in every single book of the Bible manifests, displays, points to the love of God. When I think of Ruth, which I've mentioned so many times, it's one of my favorite books, that's, that's a love story in itself. Songs of Solomon is a beautiful account with Solomon and the Shunammite, and that is a type of message of what the gospel is about with Christ and the church. All the books, throughout all, all, all the books of the Bible, it tells of the wondrous love of God for us, his creation. When we think of the book of Jonah, there was a people in Nineveh that they were just doing so much evil, so, so much evil, that judgment had to come. But yet in the midst of judgment, which was due to these people, God was about mercy and he was about looking for ways to show these people love. Hence the reason he engaged Jonah to go down and preach to them so that they could change their wicked ways and turn their life around and not come under judgment. That is the love of God. So much so that the end of Jonah, it speaks about when Jonah was so upset that these people, you know, they, they repented and that God spared them. He was, he was upset and God said, these people do not know their left hand from their right hand. Shouldn't I have mercy upon them? And that's the merciful, loving God that we have, that we serve, that is our Father, that is our Creator, that is our Maker. There are certain scriptures that I would like to read as we have this discourse on the love of God. And one of them is from Jeremiah chapter 29 and we all know that scripture but I will still read it it's a scripture that we love to quote because it gives us hope and it's a very comforting scripture and it reads well I'll read from verse 10 it says this is what the Lord says you will be in Babylon for 70 years but then I will come and do for you 
all the good things I have promised and I will bring you home. And this is a word for somebody. You are waiting on the promises of God. And this is just to emphasize to you that after the allotted time, after that time, at the set time, God will do the good things he promised and he will bring you home. Verse 11 reads, For I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. They are plans for good and not for disaster, to give you future and a hope. In those days when you pray, I will listen. If you look for me wholeheartedly, you will find me. I will be found by you, says the Lord. I will end your captivity and restore your fortunes. I will gather you out of the nations where I sent you and will bring you home again to your own land. So this was really a word that Jeremiah was speaking to Israel. But it's also a word for us and it's a word that really depicts the love of God. Even though the children of Israel, they went astray, they did evil, they left the Lord, they went to serve other gods. God was just such a loving father that after their backsliding and their going astray, when they cried out to him, he heard them and he was merciful unto them. In the verse that says, verse 13, it says, if you look for me, and that is the Lord saying that, he said, if you look for me wholeheartedly, you will find me. So all these promises, the promises of the good things that God wants to do, the promises to bring us into our good future, our expected end, all these things are hinged on, I would say, it's like a door with two set of hinges. One set of hinges is the love of God and the next set of hinges is our wholehearted seeking of the Lord. It's like cause and effect, you know, um, and, and God really wants us to be the ones to seek after him. In the book of Matthew, it says, if you seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, then all these things shall be added unto you. There are lots of things that we have need of, but God wants to lavish it upon us. He wants to show us his love by bestowing on us some of these things that we have need for and that we desire. But he's saying to us, let us seek first. Let us put him first. Let us make him the number one priority. Let us seek him with our whole heart, not half-heartedly, but seek him totally and completely. God's desire is for us, his children, to be with him, to walk with him, to obey him, and to live the life that he created us to live. There's another area of scripture that I would like to read, and that is from the book of Romans. And I'm reading from the, the new, the NLT Bible, the New Living Translation. The New Living Translation, NLT. So Romans chapter 8 from verse 31. It reads, Nothing can separate us from God's love. Absolutely nothing. What shall we say about such wonderful things as these? If God is for us. And I love that word there, if. If God is for us, and we know he is for us, who can ever be against us? Since he did not spare even his own son, but gave him up for us all, wouldn't he also, hmm, wouldn't he also give us everything else? Who dares accuse us whom God has chosen for his own? No one. 
for God himself has given us right standing with himself who then will condemn us no one for Christ Jesus died for us and was raised to life for us and he is sitting in the place of honor at God's right hand pleading for us it's like he ever lives to make intercession for us can anything ever separate us from Christ's love does it mean he no longer loves us if we have trouble or calamity or are persecuted or hungry or destitute or in danger or threatened with that as the scripture says for your sake we are killed every day we are being slaughtered like sheep no despite all these things overwhelming victory is ours through Christ who loved us and I want to repeat that overwhelming victory is ours through Christ who loves us and that reminds me of the verse that says in all things not some things in all things we are more than conquerors so because of the love of God whatever whether it be trouble calamity hunger destitution danger threats of death none of these things could separate us from God's love we are starting any battle or we are starting as we face any situation that may rise up to challenge us we are at the starting line of that trouble in a place of a victory a place of winning even before we enter the trial even before we go through the process we are guaranteed that in all things all 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 things we are more than conquerors and it continues to read from verse 38 and I am convinced that nothing can ever separate us from God's love neither death nor life angels nor demons fears for today or worries for tomorrow not even the powers of hell can separate us from God's love no power in the sky above or in the earth below indeed nothing in all creation will ever be able to separate us from the love of God that is revealed in Christ Jesus so God revealed his love for us in Christ Jesus Christ came to reconnect us back to the Father Christ came that we might experience that love of God that we might come into right relationship with God Christ came and he laid down his life he suffered he died and God was willing to turn his back on his own son so that we you and I might come into salvation and the word of God is just so beautiful as it pertains to the salvation and the love that God has for us in all the epistles especially first second and third John all of these books talks about the love greater love had no man than this and all these things just talk about this love of God this great love and why would we want to reject this great love of God why will we want to walk 
in disobedience to God. Why would we want to have other gods besides the true and living God? Why? Sometimes we need to just ask ourselves, why is it so difficult to obey God when all he has for us are plans for good? and not for evil and you know something that really really saddens me and um, I mean I may have been involved in that at one time too and but now that I've become conscious I really try to stay in a conscious conscious place of not blaming God we would do all manner of foolishness we will make wrong choices we choose a life of sin we walk in disobedience to god we do everything that is against and contrary to the word of god and when we engage in all these behaviors that that attached to them is suffering pain and death when we are involved in all those things and we start to reap the consequences for such behavior the first thing that we do is to blame god it never occurs to us uh, that maybe i did something wrong or maybe i moved away from god or maybe my disobedience has brought this upon me no we at the drop of a hat we blame God God is responsible for this so we are aware of the greatness and the vastness and the all controlling power of God when something bad happens so that we could blame God but when life going nice and we are making all our wrong choices we are not taking the blame for that it's it's almost a situation like the government and the government is the authority figure in the land and it's 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 a sick way we have of operating and that is uh, so that we don't take responsibility for our behavior and for our choices like we throw the garbage out we block up the drains the rains come and the place is flooded and we blame the government we don't take responsibility for our behavior, but we blame the government. And in much the same way, God, the authority figure of the entire universe, something happened due to our fault, due to our wrong choices, and we blame God. God loves us. He gave us a beautiful earth. He sent Jesus to die for our sins. He sent us so many leaders and teachers and people to show us the way. He loved us so much that he gave us an instruction book for life as to what we should do and how we should live. And it's because of his great love that we have all of this and when we choose to go against that love despite our wickedness despite our evil despite our disobedience despite our rebellion God still stands with his hands outstretched and beckoning us to come to him a lot of the sufferings and the pain that we are going through it's not because God is punishing us. It is because of the choices that we made that has pushed us away from God. It's the choices that we have made to live a life independent of God. It's the choices that we have made to walk in disobedience to God. And as a result, we have pain, we have suffering, we have all these things. But in the midst of that, God is saying, come. He's saying, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. God loves you so much that he stands with extended arms waiting for you to come. This is like the father of the prodigal son. The prodigal son, he took all the money. He went, he did all every imaginable thing that he could have done he wasted all the money everything was finished he ended up eating pig food suffering hungry starving no clothes and uh, one day he came to himself he came to himself and he said 
there is food in my father's house and I will arise and go to my father. And you may be viewing this program today and you may be like the prodigal son. It's time to return to the father. It's time to return to the father's love. God loves you and he is willing that none, absolutely none, should perish. He stands with his arms outstretched, calling you to come back to the Father's love. God loves you that he sent his son Jesus to die so that you might have life and have this life more abundantly. You may be living now and you may be getting by but there is so much more that God has for you. There is so much peace. There is so much joy. There is so much expressions of love that God has waiting for you and he's beckoning you. Come back. You may have served God at one point in time and uh, the issues of life got the better of you and you turned your back on God and you continued in your own lifestyle, doing your own thing. But the Lord is saying to you today, enough is enough. You may be in a situation where you would have gone through grief, you would have gone through pain, you lost a loved one and you blamed God. And it's as if you want no part of God. But God is saying, come. He's calling you, he's beckoning you to come. He will take your pain. He will bring healing to your broken heart. He will give you a new life. The life that he promised in Christ, his son, the abundant life. The Father's love is unconditional. The Father's love is waiting and beckoning and calling you to come. The father is standing as a prodigal son, father as the prodigal son's father, looking out, looking for his son. God stands looking and waiting for you to come home, for you to come back to him, for you to engage in the life that he created you for. When we go our own way and do our own thing, we are living short of the life that God has in store for us. We are not maximizing our fullest potential because the devil came to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But Jesus said, I am come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. So the choice is yours. The choice is yours today. And you know the beautiful thing about the love of God? God does not force us to love him. He does not force himself upon us, but he stands with outstretched arms and he beckons us to come. He beckons us to make that choice. Any form of love that is forced if I put a gun to you and I say, listen, you have to love me, or I'm forcing you to love me, that's not love. That, that, that is that's manipulation and that is control. And God doesn't control or manipulate us. God has created us with a free will because he wants us to choose. He said, choose ye this day whom you will serve. He said, I set before you life and death. And he loves us so much that even at that time he is saying, Choose life. Choose me. Father, I give you thanks for today. God, I give you thanks for today's program. God, I give you thanks for your love. I thank you that I have experienced your love that I cannot comprehend, I can't understand, and I don't deserve. And God, I pray today, God, for those who may be viewing this program those who may be in a backslidden state, Father, that you will draw their hearts back to you. 
God, that your Holy Spirit will bring that convicting power, God, that they will surrender to you anew. Father, I pray for whoever may be watching that never made Jesus the Lord and Savior of their life, that today will be that day. Today will be that day where they will come into the saving knowledge of abundant life and all that you have in store. God, I pray for those who may have been broken hearted. God, those who may have lost their loved ones, those who, you know, may be in pain and, and sickness and they, they, they're questioning right now. God, are you really for me? Because it is as if everything in life may have turned against them. Oh, Father God, I pray that your Holy Spirit will just overshadow such persons. God, even Christians, God, who have been praying and, you know, waiting on you for much needed help in certain areas that they, 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 they seem to have been caught in a rock and a hard place. Oh, God, I pray that you will reach down your love and help such persons in need. Oh God, that you will touch, that you will heal, that you will deliver, that you will set free. Father, that you will set free for your honor, for your glory, and for your praise. I pray in no other name but the precious name of Jesus. And in this last minute, as I close today's program, I would just like to share the last few verses of Romans 8 from verse 38 and I am convinced that nothing can ever separate us from God's love neither death nor life neither angels nor demons neither our fears for today or our worries for tomorrow not even the powers of hell can separate us from God's love no power in the sky above or in the earth below Indeed, nothing in all creation will ever be able to separate us from the love of God that is revealed in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Viewers, I thank you for tuning into the outpouring today. And I pray that the love of God will wrap you in such a way that you will never be the same again. God bless you out your spirit pour out your spirit pour be viewing out the outpouring your for your refreshing and in filling pour out your spirit pour out your spirit pour